right so welcome to liberation minded media of course this is jay dizzle and you know what i call this liberation minded media for a reason because i want people to start thinking outside the box and liberate their minds free their minds into a real level of consciousness and progressiveness productivity personally and collectively for us as a people so once in a while what i do and i've done this before is i like to use certain topics to illustrate certain points to get people to really think further than the i just initially woke up and um looking you know what i'm saying because so what you're seeing in front of you is a good example of this see and this is why the term woke the term conscious the term hotep has become synonymous with a joke and why people don't take certain things serious and i understand number one that little memes like this typically start from some white supremacist with the goal of distraction, undermining, misinformation, this counterintelligence is what it really is. But, and I also understand that some of the people that run with these things, their intent is not to be a distraction sometimes. Their intent is not to, to, to misinform people, but the effect is the same. So we got to level up our game regardless. And I've used experience experiments in the past where I show, I shared certain memes just to see where people who follow me were at in their ability to analytically and critically think because we've seen certain memes before, right? Like for instance, that documentary Hebrew from Hebrews to Negroes, they use the meme in there that I've used in the past. And it's a, it's a meme of something supposedly Adolf Hitler said that he went to war because America had the real Jews in their, in their clutch. And it's a, you know, it's against God for them to be holding it, You know what I'm saying? They implied that Hitler had some type of love for, for, for black people, which is ridiculous. If you really know the history, if you really know why, what he was doing and what he did and why he was doing it then you would know that no, absolutely not did he have any love for us or would he start a world war on, for, on our behalf? That's ridiculous. And then I've shared other memes having to do with where DAP comes from and uh, just, just, just different things just to see where people are at, right? Like, oh yeah, Charles Manson supposedly said we're gods and people took it out of context and used that as a way to feel better about themselves because for some reason, we need validation from anyone, even if it's the likes of Charles Manson, who has a Nazi swastika on his forehead and who tried to set up the Black Panthers. And if you really knew what that Helter Skelter was about, you wouldn't use him to validate who you are. You wouldn't need to if you had enough self-confidence and you really believed in yourself in the first place. So a lot of times what happens, like I said, oh, there's memes about us being immune from the Rona when that first popped off and people were running with it. And I said, this is dangerous because what you're going to do is you're going to make people take their guards down. You're not a doctor. You're going by some stupid meme. And then I proved that those memes came from a white supremacist straight up. And we run with these certain things and it doesn't really help our cause. And it makes us look dumb. It makes us a laughing stock. It undermines some of the schools of thought that we revere. So people take it as a joke. And then it becomes dangerous as well because it's like crying wolf. So like, you know, there's a lot of rumors that go on and people think all these, you know, once you first wake up, you think anything is possible and you don't really critically think to see if it even makes sense. For instance, cloning now technology is far more advanced than will probably ever be told to us by our government cloning let's just just for the sake of argument let's say that you could really clone someone in real time 
meaning you could forego the process that you have to do it at birth or an exception conception actually and that you're able just to for somehow take a 40 year old person and just clone them right up to scale in real time let's let's just say that's possible just for the sake of argument there's no proof that that's possible but let's just say it is for the sake of argument we're gonna get to the topic hold up i just want to set the stage for this real quick I'm sure somebody hearing this right now has heard things or seen things on social media like Dave Chappelle has been cloned. Gucci man has been cloned. Such and such rapper has been cloned. <laughs> it's not really funny, but so what you're essentially saying is that these people are so smart that they can clone in real time in a way that there's no like logical proof or anything that would indicate that this is possible. But if you're giving them the credit of being that smart, how at the same time are you also going to imply that they're so dumb that they don't know when and how and who to use that technology for? So if they can clone people in real time like that, why would they waste their cloning abilities on Gucci Man? That's what I'm saying. Why? For what? Let, let, give me an actual logical reason why they would do that. That's all I'm saying. Just give me an argument of why. What is the benefit to using that type of technology if it exists to clone a Gucci Man? And if you said, oh, it's because record companies want to do it so that they could put them on tour at the same, you know what I'm saying, both of them at the same time and reap the benefits. And, okay, that makes sense. At least that's a good argument. Is that probable? No. But at least that is, you know what I'm saying, at least you have something to go on to where you can say, okay, well, that's why they would do it. That would be the benefit. That would make more sense. But I haven't even heard that argument. I'm just saying that because that's the only reason why that would make sense. Dave Chappelle. Why would they clone Dave Chappelle? Why? Why would they clone someone who has the ear of the grassroots and who disrupts their narrative and opens people's eyes to things that, of course, doesn't benefit them? doesn't make sense UFOs let's talk about that for a second because really what I want y'all to get out of this is that sometimes this extra woke too woke too revolutionary theory actually works against us so let's go let's talk about UFOs now I'll say this about UFOs unidentified flying objects that's what that really means it means it's something that's unidentified until it's identified it could be considered a ufo but because when we speak ufos the implication is that there's some type of other extraterrestrial meaning from outside of our earth being or spacecraft a lot of times i believe that they come from this earth but that's not the point let's say that there are ufo spaceships piloted by bipedaler beings from outside of this planet i'm not gonna say there's no intelligence out there when we know there's billions of pla planets in infinite space that we haven't even been able to penetrate a, a, a fraction of i'm saying it's probably likely we can't prove it but it's likely but then when we see every stupid little thing and we start calling it UFOs and every conspiracy theory we start running with, what happens is, see, that's part of counterintelligence, too, because what happens is we oversaturate ourselves to the point and we desensitize ourselves to the point to where when something real happens, we don't notice it because a lot of people won't believe it because of some of the ridiculous claims that people have been making as if it's true. So when you have like, like people like, who's that dude? Orlando Brown or who's that lady? Jaguar. 
supposedly exposing people for certain rituals in the game. And you want to believe it because you know there's some faulty things going on. And you oversaturate it with people who don't have the credibility. Then what happens is the real stuff will go right by you. And that's part of counterintelligence and part of the actual strategy. Not only that, when, you, when we have some of these conspiracies, there's people under the earth and reptilian shapeshifters and planet um, way out there, Palladians that are circling the planet and all this. When you, when you have these type of theories, the rulers aren't human. They're drinking blood and doing this, whatever, whatever. What you're doing is actually taking people's focus from what we should be doing for real, for real. And you're making this Illuminati secret society that's so powerful we can't fight back. So all we do is pontificate about what's going on, but we don't make any plans to actually get out of the situation and to advance. Because in your mind, subconsciously, if they're reptilian shapeshifters from underground or from some far beyond planet with high technology that we can't do nothing about, how can you fight against that? And that's part of the strategy for this counterintelligence programming. See, counterintelligence goes past just trying to thwart black nationalism. Counterintelligence is something that's used on society in general. And it's to cause distractions, misinformation, and to undermine certain things or events so that people won't take the proper steps to rectify or to get justice for and now we're going to get down to what i really want to speak about was this particular post no coincidence it comes from a hotep like i said like you know hotep is a righteous word it, it, there's a lot to it there's a lot to that ideology of my yacht that actually can be implemented in the real world and that could be used to understand things of a higher level of intelligence but when we do silly shit like this in those names because a lot of times when we get a lot of this goofy information it comes from people who represent certain schools of thoughts that are supposed to be revered and taken seriously but what we're doing is now we're undermining that to the point to where it's associated with being a fucking joke so this right here in regards to Tyree Nichols there's a post of him laid up with a Becky snow bunny pink toe. It says this, this is Tyree Nichols and his GF pictured on the left, who was apparently Demetrius Haley's ex. So it's basically saying that the woman that uh, the police officer killed Tyree Nichols over was a white girl. And first of all, it hasn't been, you know, it hasn't been proven. Although, you know, I, I know it was probably something personal from what I seen on the video that this was really over a girl, but fine. Let's say it was, and let's say it was even over a white girl. And of course, you know, when it comes to talking black, you know, there is a legitimate reason why you may question someone's sincerity when they are laid up with someone other than self. But Tyree Nichols was not a leader or a thought leader or any type of uh person that was advocating for us in a way that were that should be considered he was a brother who was killed period and the objective of us making this a story and not letting it die out and exposing the haps of what happened and making sure we push for justice is to overall continue the fight for social justice against police terrorism period so who he was sleeping with is 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 not substantial it doesn't matter so no consequences it doesn't matter so when we start putting things like this out what happens is now people will start undermining this brother which has happened on this particular post on Facebook. I don't want you to see the, the whole name of the person who posted it because I'm not trying to expose them. But I'm saying now when this, now the conversation starts to become 
the white girl. Now we're letting the white girl distract us from what our goal should be, which is to get justice. Who does who who does that benefit? Does it benefit the family of, of Tyree Nichols? Does it benefit us and our overall agenda as we continue this fight against police brutality and terrorism? It steers the energy and the conversation towards insignificant factors. Because then people start getting in their feelings. Now all of a sudden, sisters are like, oh, well, fuck him then. I don't care. Boop de boop. And then the brother's trying to be so woke. Oh, he was with a white girl. Well, then that's what he gets. What if this was your family? What if this was one of your loved ones? Would you want the focus to be on insignificant, trivial stuff? Because that's what the mainstream media does. When one of ours are, are, are taken from us prematurely, unjustifiably, they look at factors that have nothing to do with it, that are insignificant, and they make that the conversation. Tamir Rice had a fake gun. Trayvon Martin had weed in the system. Mike Brown stole some Swisher sweets. You know what I'm saying? This per George Floyd had a drug problem. So now we're, we're, we're looking at these factors to undermine their life. And what that means is that maybe it's justified or maybe it doesn't matter that they died because they weren't perfect. And that becomes the conversation more so than, hey, does it even matter? Did he deserve to have his life taken from those who receive our taxpayer dollars to serve and protect according to their mantra? Is it right that police officers continue to get immunity for doing things that are illegal, immoral? And by definition, terrorism and genocidal. See, that's the point. See, this is these are the, the like I said before. When it comes to this new Cointel Pro, a lot of it is us doing the exact same things and same tactics that they used to do. And at this point, it doesn't have to even be deliberate. It could be just. trying too hard it cannot be intended but the effect is the same because undermining this brother's death does not benefit our cause and it doesn't benefit him and his family does it benefit us pushing the the line on this police accountability for us to focus on oh he had a white girl so who cares who really cares? And, 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 and you never see this happening from other groups. You would not see Chinese people saying, oh, yeah, well, this Chinese person who was killed by a police, well, he was dating a black girl. So you wouldn't see those kind of things. People are more advanced on their codification, and that's where we need to get with it. That's not the issue. Even the race of these police isn't the issue. The issue is police know that they can get immunity or they feel that way. So they can continue to treat us like enemies and murder us disproportionately because they feel they can get away with it. And they feel they can get away with it because they have for so long. And part of how they have is because our lives are typically undermined after it happens. And this is what the mainstream media has been doing, but now we do it ourselves to some degree with things like this right here. Who benefits from this? Learn how to critically think, think things through.
Anyway, like, subscribe. Let me know what you think. You don't have to agree. But I just want, you know, people to be a little bit more mindful about like some of the things that we share or some of the discussions that we have, because regardless, we create because we all are media. We all are media. So what we say and post in the, in the discussions we have can become sound bites to be used against us. This is why I say it's dangerous to say certain things because, you, you know, not, people will take that. And then they'll loop it or they'll use it as, hey, well, this is what these guys think. Or now let's blow up this part of the issue. And we'll put the justice on the back burner so we can have this discussion. Because if this is who this person is, and the next thing you know, oh, well, we found out he he liked to drink lean. Well, he rode in a stolen car when he was a kid. Oh, and then that becomes the, dis the discussion. And these kind of things are used to undermine our cause and undermine and, and, un and devalue our lives. Don't contribute to that. Like. Subscribe, share, comment, let me know what you think, all that good stuff. Appreciate your time, y'all. Peace.